What it is, folks? Your homeboy, Fur, back again with another episode of The Realest. Most entertaining sports show in the game. Put it on some. I'm solo dolo for the promo on this episode. My brother Tim G. Jacob is on the clock tonight. You know what I'm talking about, but I'm going to hold it down per usual. You feel me? But before we get into it, I need y'all to go ahead, hit that subscribe button. You know what I'm talking about? Hit, go ahead and hit that like button because you finna like what we finna talk about. You feel me? Y'all already see it right there. Y'all see what we finna get into. You know what I'm talking about? Make sure you share. Make sure you put your people on it because we got to talk. For a matter of fact, I got to talk to one individual in particular. And that's Coach Prime, Deion Sanders. This video is intended for Coach Prime's ears only. But if y'all want to listen, feel free. Feel free. He's my audience. He is who it's intended for. But feel free to listen. Okay? Because y'all know what's been going on. Okay? Y'all in the loop. Y'all hear it. Y'all hear what... Y'all watch social media. Y'all own uh, uh, various platforms, whether it be Facebook and Twitter or instagram or whatever the hell it is y'all uh, uh watch other youtube uh channels but you better be watching all first letter videos first but y'all keeping up with the hell even big media getting into it and everybody speculating about what is Deion sanders gonna do because every time there's a job that comes open Especially one of these jobs that ain't like no blue blood job or something like that. You know what I'm talking about? But like a Georgia Tech. Coach Prime's name gets thrown out there. So here we are again. And I know some might say, Hey, why y'all talking about this? I'm tired of hearing about this. God damn it, I'm tired of talking about it. I'm tired of talking about it. But I wouldn't be doing my job as a person in the entertainment business, as a person with a sports show, to have this story out here, and this is one of the main things I cover, and not fucking talk about it. But I pride myself on the fact that I'm going to talk about it in a way and I'm going to say things that nobody else will say because they don't have the capability nor the courage to say it in the way I'm going to fucking say it. So let's talk about it. Before I deep dive into my message to coach, Y'all know Georgia Tech recently fired their uh, head coach. And so all this specula speculation is swirling that Coach Prime would take that job. That they they really want Coach Prime to come in and bring Georgia Tech, Tech back to re relevance. Got the Atlanta Connects. You know that coach started his football career there, his Hall of Fame football career. He also played baseball there. Uh, we know that Atlanta, uh, it's a black city. It, it, it's, it's a vibe. It's black Hollywood. It's like, it, it's just ripe for him. Georgia Tech is in the ACC. Coach Prime played Florida State in the ACC. Okay, all this shit. So that's what I, everybody's talking about. But this is what I got to say about it. Coach, you got a decision to make. And your decision is between somewhere that wants you and somewhere that needs you. Somewhere that wants you and somewhere that needs you. 
coach Georgia Tech wants you. Georgia Tech sees now. Focus on that now. We'll come back to that. Georgia Tech sees now. Now you can fucking coach. They see it, coach. They see that you have a command of your team. Connect with young men. Young men listen to you. You galvanize young men. Things might not be going right in the first half. You go in at halftime. You galvanize the team. You galvanize your coaches. You come out. Things look better in the second half. They see that you can be a CEO of a program. They see you make good hires on your staff. They see this. They see that you're able to do the number one thing for college athletics, which is recruit. They see that down at Jackson State University, you've been able to get recruiting classes that have bested many FBS teams. You've been able to attract the number one recruit in all of the land in the previous class in Travis Hunter. You've been able to attract other top talent like Kevin Coleman. You've been able to do the fool in the transfer portal. I'm talking do the fool up in that motherfucker. They see at the positions like wide receiver, defensive back, it just just bringing them in. Those rooms are crazy. They see that. They see that. They see that your brand doesn't slow down at all. The brand that you are is steady rolling from the commercials to the online presence. They see that. They want some of that. But they want it now. They want it now, coach. Because just a few years back, they didn't have a motherfucker like you then, coach. Nobody in the country had a motherfucker like you then, coach. You apply for those jobs, coach. And they didn't want you. They want to make you prove it. Now, some may say that that's rational, that's logical. Yes, he was a Hall of Fame player. Yes, he was a great uh, analyst for NFL Network. But, hey, how do we know he can coach? They didn't make motherfuckers like Steve Kerr. Don't put, they ain't put them on no prove-it deals. And that was in the league. That was in the league, and he wasn't even a Hall of Fame player like you are, coach. That man went from playing to TV to GM, then the head coach. Steve Nash went on no prove it deal, coach. And again, that's at the pro ranks. These FBS PWIs wanted you to have to prove it. But now that they see what you're doing down here in Jackson, Mississippi, now is we want you. <laughs> they want you. But let me tell you something about your people. We need you. Straight the fuck up and down. We need you. Why do we need you? Fuck football. Jackson State has won SWAC championships before. I got an interview. That hope, hopefully y'all check that out as well. Interview Brother Picasso Nelson, Dr. Picasso Nelson. He was on the SWAC title team. I interviewed Coach Marcus Rogers on here before. He was on the SWAC title team. Went to the game against Grambling. 
in which Jack State was celebrating WC Gordon. You won numerous swag titles. Jack State has done that shit before, Coach. So this shit ain't even about football. Or you might say, well, we win the Celebration Bowl this year. We won the Black National title. Jack State ain't done that. So what is it about? Why do we need you? We need you for this money. We need you because this money. Your people have been historically discriminated against in this nation. And it all relates to money. Once upon a time in the Constitution, who weren't viewed as a whole person, but as a chattel, who was viewed as money. We were viewed as wealth in this country. Then when slavery ended, since then, we've been systematically kept from the bag. To the point where I saw somebody posted a, a like a list of just HBCUs and showing how much they've been underfunded, like how much their state governments fucking owe them. We've been denied as a people reparations while we see our government send money over to fucking Ukraine right now to fight against Russia. And we see our president say uh he gonna keep doing whatever it takes however much money needs to be spent and that president was largely put in there by black people that president was made hot because he was the vice president of a black person like this the, the historic shit it's deeper than football So you might say, well, fuck, how the fuck football got to do money? The number one recruiting tool for a university ain't even its academics. Fucking crazy, ain't it? Crazy, ain't it? Because the university is about academics, right? So I know how this country is. Outside of the fucking Ivy League. You know what I'm saying? Like for Harvard and Yale and all that kind of shit. Yes, no, academics is their selling ultimate selling point. Okay. They don't need their football teams, basketball team to fucking market them. They are who they are. But when it comes to your average university in the United States of America, most people identify with the sports team before they identify with the best academic department of the school. Most people know you, coach, instead of knowing whoever the best professor at Jack State is right now. So you are a recruiting tool for the university, just like all other uh, uh, successful head coaches. You can help shine a light on this university, all HBCUs, help increase enrollment, Help attract more of these young, brilliant black minds to these HBCUs. When they graduate from these HBCUs, then they go out into the workforce and they get good money, hopefully good upper middle class paying jobs uh, uh, at the bare minimum. And then where does that money go? That money goes back into their university. The money goes back into their hoods. The money goes back to their K-12. It's bigger than just fucking football. We need that. George Tech don't fucking need that. George Tech good on that. Georgia Tech wants to be relevant in football again. Georgia Tech does not need to be relevant in football again. They don't fucking need that, man. They gonna be good. They gonna be good. Any renovations that need to happen on campus or whatever, they gonna make it happen? They got alums that got long money going back to slavery. They gonna be good. They got political connections that gonna make sure they shit be good. They got all that. This funny business that's been going on in Mississippi with Britt Favre and Tate Reeves and Phil Bryan and all these other motherfuckers, that shit go on throughout the country. 
just ain't nobody got the text messages. They gonna be good. They don't need you. Your people need you. We need that light. Because, Coach, you were so fucking stellar. You were so fucking stellar. And you were so charismatic that they gravitated towards you. And you can get into some of these rooms that the average swag coach, the average HBCU coach just ain't going to be able to get into. Buddy Pugh is amazing. He ain't gonna be able to get in the same room as you. He defeated you on the field last year and still can't goddamn get in none of these fucking rooms. Ain't Rich Eisen ain't trying to talk to that motherfucker. He probably wanna talk to you. Straight up. So what you're able to do. It's help get your people in the right rooms. You're able to call motherfuckers out on a bullshit and on a national scale, people gonna pay attention. And we need that. Georgia Tech don't need that. Whoever the fuck else come calling, they don't need that. They want it. They want it. They don't need that shit. So you got a decision to make, Coach. You want to go where you want it? Or do you want to stay where you need it? Only you can make that decision. I think about uh, what I heard you say about God calling you to do what you're doing right now. There is a mission. And I can't speak to that too much because one's relationship with God is a very personal thing. It's one of the things I just told my daughter the other day. But I will say this. The shirt that I'm wearing today, the statement that I'm wearing today, my daughter picked this out for me. Let me let, let, me let y'all see my daughter chose for me to wear for this episode. Just randomly. She didn't know what the hell I was finna talk about. She chose my Muhammad Ali shirt. And when she did that, I was about to tell her no. I was about to tell her no, baby. Get daddy something else. I'm not going to be talking about boxing or anything this episode. But then I got to thinking about this particular segment. And I got to thinking about you, coach. And Ali again. You see, I've said on this program before. Outside of Muhammad Ali, nobody else in the history of sports has been as elite an athlete as you. And as charismatic as you at the same time. Like those two things. Only Ali got you. Only one. And I think about what he did for us. His people. He had to do that. Sacrificing his prime like that. He had to do that. But that's why we love him. Not just because he was able to do the Ali shuffle and had a mean left jab and an awesome right cross and a uh, mean ass combinations. That ain't why we fucked with him. It was the totality of the man. But see, he was robbed. He was robbed. Now, y'all great athletes, y'all all are robbed of your athleticism. 
I'm sure you can't run a four two for breakfast no more like you used to. Hell, you lost two of your toes now. We know that was chronicled last year. We saw what you went through. God bless you. But all of y'all are robbed of that. Mike Jordan ain't jumping from the damn free throw line no more. But again, you and Ali had another component. That charisma and that gift of gab. Y'all had that. And he was robbed of that in his old age. So the further changes that he probably would have made, the, 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 the further revolutionary shit that he probably would have done had it not been for Parkinson's. He was robbed of that and shit. Therefore, we were robbed of that. But you aren't, coach. Think about that. You have an opportunity in your post career and on into your later life to do some things that Muhammad Ali couldn't even do in his later years. Therefore, you have a chance to work your way into those history books somewhere up in there with him. Now, the stance he took, he was facing down prison. Okay. So, Cole, that that's a, some heavy lifting. Okay. But you got a fucking chance to work your way up in there somewhere. To be seen in all these black history books showing up. Got that chance. If you stay where you need it. I'm sure that's what he would have done. I'm sure that's what Ali would have done. So let's see what you going to do, Coach. I hope you make the right decision. Because we need you. Put it on some. Thank you so much for watching my daddy's YouTube channel. Make sure you like, share, and turn on your post notifications. Okay, how do I do it?